Welcome to our Taking Stock video for the week ending the 16th of February 2024. I'm Ken Trin, Head of Research at Stock Doctor, and today I'm joined by our Senior Portfolio Manager, Matthew Swartz, to stream to your thing share market. How are you keeping this reporting season, Matt? Uh, going quite well, thanks, Ken. A first time back uh, on Taking Stock for the year, so uh, no, it's my pleasure to be joining you. Pleasure is all mine, Matt. Uh, but before we get started, just a quick yet important reminder. The information we provide today is of a generic nature and therefore shouldn't be considered as personal advice. Remember, shares are volatile and past performance figures shouldn't be relied upon as a guide for future performance. Um, also, a reminder that we will be running our Melbourne and Sydney Masterclass later this year. This is a full day hands-on educational program where Tim Lincoln, Matthew Swartz, Dan Ortizzi and I will be personally helping our members master all aspects to Stock Doctor so that they can enhance their investment journey and maximize the return on their membership. So we'll be sending out invitations next week. But Matt, back to the markets. It was quite a choppy week on the share market as investors reassessed their exposures after US inflation figures for January, they came in higher than expected. And this dashed hopes that interest rates will be cut quickly over the calendar year. So this concept has also impacted local markets with bonds now pricing in an RBA rate cut by December from earlier bets occurring in September, Matt. Yeah, so I'm sort of looking at this as the, you know, the, the market really had its wake up call for what has been fairly out of control equity markets, but uh, it didn't last long. It was merely a blip in this bull rally with stocks having erased much of those early week losses and are now racing towards uh, yet another week of gains. So at the moment, investors are largely ignoring sticky inflation measures uh, amongst what is becoming quite um, evident is deteriorating economic data, noting that yesterday Japan and the UK revealed that both their economies are in a technical recession. So we're in this wacky land of investing at the moment. Bad economic news is being celebrated as good news because it does increase the probability of earlier rate cuts. And we are seeing this as a very dangerous setup because analysts have been largely optimistic on earnings this year which will be very unlikely in a weakening global economy. In fact, for the reporting season here in Australia, we have witnessed slight downgrades to forecasted earnings already. As you can see from the chart on screen, share prices have become unanchored by the downward trend in earnings. And this break in correlation is unlikely to hold for long. Hence, at this stage of the market cycle, we believe investors should apply stringent risk management techniques across their portfolios. This includes uh, staying diversified, profit-taking, and even hedging your downside risk. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Matt. Uh, and with reporting season now past the halfway mark, let's turn our attention to some star stock highlights over the weekend. Uh, among the best performers were star growth stock and circuit board designer Ultium. Um, they received a takeover offer from Tokyo-based Renesis Electronics at a 34% premium to their last close price. Now, Renesis Electronics, uh, they are a semiconductor designer, and by bringing Ultium software into their business, they've effectively cut out the middleman and capture a larger share of the value chain. However, Renesis, um, they had a negative share price reaction post the acquisition announcement, probably reflecting the fact that the company has overpaid to some degree for Ultium. Well, that's one way of putting it, isn't it, Cam? I think they've paid 50 times its enterprise value relative to its operating earnings. That is an eye-watering multiple to pay for any company. So needless to say, this is a very good outcome for Ultium shareholders and for our Lincoln Growth Fund investors, where we've had a position for quite some time. Now, in other news this week, Australia's largest biotech company, CSL, uh, announced its first half 2024 financials, which were largely in line with market expectations. Return on equity came in at 15% with improving margins, and there was strong demand for its blood plasma business, uh, CSL Bearing. Uh, which represents about 65% of total revenue. And while the blood division exceeded expectations, uh, CSL V4, the dialysis and uh, iron deficiency segment, fell short of consensus estimates. So what do you think is causing this drag here, Ken? Well, after discussions with our analyst team, uh, Matt, uh, the V4 acquisition is performing below expectations and management has revised their outlook from double-digit growth over the medium term to a more conservative, softer growth outlook. From what we could gather, though, the slow growth over the first half was due to the loss of 
an exclusivity uh, license in the European iron deficiency market and also decrease reimbursement rates in the US. And these factors are likely to be short-term headwinds in our view and was the reason why the share price uh, reaction was quite weak on the day. Now, prior to the result on Monday, CSL also announced that a costly phase three trial of CSL-112 um, drug was unsuccessful. And this is a drug that prevents de deadly second heart attacks. So despite this, CSL has multiple new drugs in the pipeline and with improving technologies such as new plasma collection devices, um, it's expected to improve their return on equity and drive earnings growth into the future. Hence why we believe weakness in the share price is representing a decent buying opportunity. Yeah, thanks, Matt. And moving on to our star income stocks, the Commonwealth Bank, they released their first half result as well, revealing a slight decline in their net interest margins. This is effectively the difference between their home loan rates and also their funding costs, such as deposit rates. Now, the bank has been trying to protect their profit margins, but this has come at the expense of losing market share, with uh, their market share declining slightly to around 25.3%. As a result, though, Earnings are expected to fall this year, leading to a higher dividend payout ratio. But positively bad debts remain low, with loans in arrears or late payments currently at only half a percent of total home loans. And despite a rise in expenses, the bank performed strongly across its business banking division and it helped it to increase its interim dividend to $2.15. And the stock is expected to go ex dividend on the 21st of February, and despite the share rally, Leading into its results, the stock remains on a gross dividend yield of a healthy 5.6%. And over the week, Matt, um, there were numerous other star stocks that released their updates, including uh, Telstra, ProMedicus, West Farmers, GUD Holdings, Ridley Corp, the ASX, and ComputerShare. So you can find these companies and access the analyst commentary by referring to the latest star stock updates section on the homepage. And also looking ahead, it will be another busy week for the results announcements. A few star stocks of interest include Cochlear, NetWealth, AUB, Group, uh, Hanson, and also WiseTech. We also have Deterra Royalties and also Endeavor Group. They are expected to go ex-dividend for income investors. So please refer to the corporate calendar for more information. In Under the Microscope this week, we take a closer look at education and high stakes English language testing provider, IDP Education. The company released its first half 24 results, which beat analyst expectations. Matt, can you shed any light on why the market may have underestimated the company's performance this period? Yeah, that's right, Ken. It was indeed a very healthy and stellar result. And I think it caught many of the market participants off guard if you have a consideration around the level of short interest. So there was some negative expectations leading into this result uh, so that for the company to produce a consensus beat of some 9%, um, it did have a, a very good uh, effect on its share price on the day. So peeling back the layers, the outperformance was due to better than expected student placement volumes as international students showed keen interest in studying abroad. Yes, certainly that short interest has been hanging around and uh, contributed to the negative sentiment to the share price over the last couple of months, largely due to risks such as increasing competition in Canada, as well as the political tensions in India, and of course, the expected cut to immigration numbers in Australia as well. So are these risks now fully priced in and how should investors think about the company going forward? Yeah, very good question. Uh, I think there's two sides to this. Firstly, the increasing competition in the Canadian market does relate to the IELTS business. Um, as competitor Pearson's was recently recognised as an alternative English high stakes test provider versus IELTS in August 2023. Mm -hmm. And IELTS volumes were rather subdued over the first half of 24 due to the weak industry conditions, such as a decline in student uh, sentiment towards Canada and higher visa rejection rates from Australia, along with the competition from uh, Pearson's. One thing uh, I noticed also when I was looking at the presentation, Matt, is that the the increased competition only started in August 2023, meaning that the first half of 24 displayed only two months worth of impacts. So offsetting the lower volumes has been a 7% increase in pricing for these English tests. 
and this has helped keep earnings revision stable for the time being. Yeah, we've noticed a few companies have sort of flexed over this period and uh, increased prices and, uh, you know, well done to, to IDP Education for holding their margins. Mm -hmm. And from the view of the student placement volumes, IDP seems to be gaining market share and is growing above industry trends, which is positive. So the, the uplift from this segment may uh, endure over the, the short to medium term and support its return on uh, equity in excess of 30%. Yeah, given the growth levers, though, the stock may potentially represent an opportunity for some investors. Um, IDP, they are currently trading at a steep discount to valuation, but investors need to be comfortable with those ongoing risks, including the potential slowdown in student immigration to Australia and Canada. Yeah, of course. And if you are trend sensitive, we will need to wait on the sidelines until the SD30 TSR triggers an entry to the upside. We continue to like the company as a quality operator with a unique business model. So the market probably wants to see a lot uh, of the political tensions and visa changes abate before they get more comfortable with the stock. The reporting season is a time when there are many star stock changes. So a useful question this week is, how can members keep track of all the star stock changes over the last month? And to keep track of star stock updates and company announcements, members can refer to the latest uh, star stock updates section under the research homepage. And to get more detail, click on view all, and this will take you to the recent updates and announcements page. You can also access this page under the tools header and clicking on recent updates. Here you'll be able to monitor star stock recommendations and changes by selecting all companies. You choose a time frame, say three months, and then select a star stock recommendation changes. The tool will then provide you with a list of all star stock changes. Yes, very useful, Matt. And you can also identify star stock changes under the alert manager. Here, you'll be able to set a star stock change alert and have the option to process this intraday or receive the alert via email. The alert manager also allows you to monitor other changes, you know, such as earnings revisions and technical breaches. So uh, jump in there and, um, you know, investigate yourself. But these tools will help you stay on top of your portfolio during the reporting season. And as always, feel free to contact us or attend our Lincoln Live webinar if you have any questions. Also be mindful the research team will be extra busy analyzing the results this reporting season. So but we will endeavour to return your call in a timely manner. Thanks, Matt, for your valuable insights today. Thank you for having me, Ken. Also a reminder that uh, we will be sending out our invitations to the Melbourne and Sydney Masterclass next week, so look out for that. But to summarise, the market rally doesn't appear to be reflecting fundamentals, and the biggest risk to its sustainability will be further downward earnings revisions if inflation remains sticky and interest rates stay higher for longer. Hence, it would be prudent to apply risk management strategies such as staying diversified, taking profits, especially on stocks that have run up too hard. This will, of course, free up some cash to allow for opportunities this reporting season. Take care and have a happy, healthy and prosperous week ahead.